friends and family. It's Sunday. It's a little bit cooler today, but still crisp and clear and spring-like. Well, it is spring, so it's spring. I might do a little gardening, might do a little yard work. There's something that I do need to do, but I forget what it is, so I guess I won't do it until I remember. Thanks for coming with me. Yes, you do have a rainbow all around you. Nice zipper, nice. Also, there's a chipmunk down there. Is there? Did you know you can make a rainbow if you put the sun at your back and a mist in front of you from your head out Oh, I forget exactly what it is. It's like a 24 degree or 25 degree angle. You'll see a rainbow all around the line that forms between your head and eyes and the sun. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, Zephyr, check it out. Three bald eagles. We've always got the one curious duck that always wants to know what's going on wherever there's action. She's pretty bold. Zephyr one day, just Zephyr and Emmett one day, just started digging a hole here, thinking, oh, it'd be a good place for a little duck pond. And sure enough, there's really good clay soils here, so it does hold water when it rains. Unfortunately, right here near our house, we don't have a spring. There are springs like 150 feet that way coming up out of the ground. But anytime it rains, this fills up and the ducks love it. There's something about muddy water that is like a hyper attractant for a duck. <laughs> cool thing about my lawn, lawn is everything that's left after you cut down the trees and pull up the blackberries and raspberries. Whatever grows back, that's your lawn. Just mow it down. There's some grass, there's wildflowers, there's, you know, even a few perennials, you probably, you know, woody plants and stuff. But as long as you keep it cut down, it it's all green, right? That's what matters. And furthermore, the ecosystem is much larger because the species diversity is greater than just one, two, or three species of grass, which is which, which is what most lawns are. The very special thing about my lawn though is, as you saw, I can just rake all my stuff to the edge. I don't have to rake it up or mulch it or collect it. I just fling it off to the edge. It's the greatest thing and then it just rots. Yesterday, I didn't quite get in enough fire, not even near enough firewood. Um, so I'm just gonna pluck a few more trees that are uh, growing close to my barn. And I'm gonna take some white ash because the white ash notoriously is a drier wood, so it will tend to dry quickly. Uh, you know, this tree wants to fall toward the, the barn just because of the way it's leaning. So the trick is always to make a, a good cut V-notch down low and hinge it so that it can uh, and hinge it so it can only fall in a certain direction. So it sounds like it's a moose crashing through the woods out there.
cherry tree is dead. And cherry trees are known to harbor ant, carpenter ants. So I'll be interested to see what happens when I bring it down. But I don't see woodpecker holes, which is typically an indicator that there's ants. Down it comes. <laughs> in good shape there's no rot here but the tree was dead I got it just in time you can see early in its life it had some pretty big big years I mean, look at these look at the size of these growth rings this was a field back then um, and then you can see as you get out towards the edge the growth rings get much tighter as the competition as the other trees grew in around it so, yeah, this tree is probably 40 years old, maybe? 35? Maybe? Yeah, baby! <laughs> Why don't you ever model for me, Mrs. Kensington? You know how Mr. Kensington feels about that. Oh, behave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I like the name that Pierre Simonson uh, told me. He's one of my Swedish subscribers. They call these mouse ears when the leaves first come out and they have just these little teeny, little teeny proto leaves that come out. Musaron in uh, Swedish, I think, if I pronounced, pronounced, pronounced it right. It's all over the place now, though. The buds, they are a-breaking. 